In our previous video, we gave a basic definition of the cylindrical and spherical coordinate systems. We had that the Cartesian coordinates were related to the cylindrical coordinates in this way, and the spherical coordinates are related to the Cartesian coordinates in this way. Next thing we'll talk about is a, what's called a scale factor. So, scale factor has to do with the fact that the units of our coordinates in a general curvilinear coordinate system do not necessarily correspond to distance. So in this cylindrical coordinate system, we have an r, a phi, and a z. Now the units of r and z correspond to distance, but the units of phi are in radians, they're angles. Uh, that creates issues when we go to take derivatives or integrals because we need, we're need we always trying to integrate, say, over an area. So we need to account for the fact that a small change in phi gives a different change in distance depending on the value of r. Or in the spherical coordinate system, a small change in theta might give a different distance depending on the values of r and phi. So we'll have a look at it, how that actually works out. So this is related to uh, what we call the distance metric in that coordinate system. So in general, this, this is uh, a general statement. It relates to any curvilinear coordinate system, not necessarily cylindrical or spherical. Uh, the ds, a small change in distance or path length, is going to be a sum of these scale factors, h1, times coordinate x1 plus h2 times coordinate x2 plus h3 times coordinate x3. And we'll assume here we're working in a three-dimensional system. This could go on forever if there are more coordinates, depending on the type of theory you're working with, but we'll just assume that we have a three-dimensional space. To get what those scale factors are, I should say for each of these, these are dx1, dx2, and dx3. So this tells us what is a small change in path length for a small change in x1, small change in x2, small change in x3. So, in the cylindrical coordinate system, for example, if we're located at this point here, given by A, and we make a small change in R, so let's say we move a small distance here, D, and the length of that is, so we're saying that DR, we're making a unit change in R, dr is equal to 1, we're moving only in the radial direction. Oh. I should go back a step here. In the cylindrical coordinate system, when we change r, we're moving parallel to the xy plane. So a small change in r, say, moving in this direction, so I'm moving parallel to the r vector here. I'm saying ds is equal to 1 for that path when dr is equal to 1. And that's because r already has units of distance. So if I make a unit change in r, then the path length is going to be just equal to 1. Now, if I make a unit change in phi, so here's where it gets a little bit different. Okay, I'm making a small change in phi here. So I have a little arc, and I'm saying d phi is equal to 1 here. ds, in this case, is going to, the length of this little arc here, if I project this back to the axis, you can see that even though d phi is the same at all points in this arc, 
the actual length of the path depends on what r is at that point. So ds is going to be r. So r times d phi, and d phi is 1. So ds is just going to be r in this case. So here, since I made a unit change in r, and ds was equal to 1, I can say that h sub r is equal to 1. However, when I make a unit change in phi, ds is equal to r. So I can define that as h phi. And the third coordinate in this system is z. If I make a unit change in z, so I go straight up, if bz is equal to 1, ds is also equal to 1, and that's h sub z. So to summarize, in the cylindrical coordinate system, I have h sub r is equal to h sub z, both equal to 1. However, h sub phi is equal to r. So whenever, we're, whenever we see d phi in an integral or a derivative, we should always put an r beside it. So coming, relating that back to say we have a small volume, dv, in a Cartesian coordinate system, the infinitesimal volume is dx, dy, dz. But in this case, infinitesimal volume, and I have my dx, dy, and dz. However, in this coordinate system, the scale factors for each of these is just equal to 1. They already have units of distance. But in the cylindrical coordinate system, now I'm going to put, along with each of these, the appropriate scale factor. So for I have my dr, I have my d phi, and I have my dz. Scale factor for r is 1. The scale factor for phi is equal to r. The scale factor for z is equal to 1. So whenever you see dv in a cylindrical coordinate system, you'll always see r, dr, d phi, dz. And the same goes for derivatives. Whenever you see a dx or a, or a dr, you always have to have a scale factor of 1 with it. Whenever there's a d phi, there's a scale factor of r, and dz has a scale factor of 1. So in a subsequent video, we'll look a little more closely at that. Doing the same thing for the spherical coordinate system, we can see that if we make a small change in r, here. So when dr when we have dr is equal to 1, we're going to have the path length ds is equal to 1. And this is holding uh, d phi and d theta equal to 0. If we make a small change in phi, it's similar to in the cylindrical coordinate system. So I'm moving sort of along this arc right here. So when d phi is equal to 1, ds is equal to now the path length is determined by the, the part of R that's in the xy plane. So remember, phi is this angle that moves parallel to the xy plane. So ds is R sine theta. 
And then finally, if we make a small change in theta, d theta equal to 1, so now I'm moving on an arc along the outside of the sphere, down along this uh, longitude arc. Now the distance that I move only depends on r. So ds is equal to r. So in the spherical coordinate system, I have h sub r is equal to 1. h sub phi is equal to r sine theta and h sub theta is equal to r. Okay, that summarizes the scale factors for the two coordinate systems. We'll make use of these uh, when we're looking at how do we actually define things like the gradient, the divergence, and so on in these coordinate systems.